If you're a senior over the age of 55 who's serious about your health, you've likely heard of the potential benefits of cold plunging, ice baths, or cryotherapy. All these different types of cold immersion therapy are touted as being incredibly beneficial for our health. But do they actually move the needle when it comes to our health? or are they all hype? What is cold therapy? Do you actually need to get into cold water or can you just get the same benefits from a cold shower? How long do you need to do it for? What's the ideal temperature and is it safe for seniors? Today, we're gonna be diving in quite literally to the cold plunge and the research behind it and figuring out if this is something that you should be doing health-wise and talking about the potential benefits and drawbacks. Now, before we get into this, I do wanna say that you should probably consult your personal physician before embarking on any sort of cold therapy journey. There are some potential risks associated with getting into extreme cold and we'll cover those later. Today, my cold plunging buddy and my wife, Nicole, is gonna be joining us. She is a certified personal trainer and an expert on helping women over the age of 40 to build healthy, strong bodies. And she'll be talking a little bit later on. So what is cold plunging? Well, cold plunging is a type of deliberate cold exposure therapy. And it's deliberate because you're actually choosing to do it. Just getting cold does not constitute deliberate cold exposure therapy. And that's an important distinction because the benefits that can be derived from really any type of stress are usually only found if you're doing it deliberately as opposed to if it's happening to you. Now, cold exposure therapy can constitute many different things from cryotherapy to being outside in the cold with minimal but societally acceptable amounts of clothes on or actually getting into cold water. Now, we get the most questions about cold water immersion therapy or cold plunging as it's often called. So that's what we're gonna dive into today. That's what I practice personally, and it's what there's the most research on. Now, the bevy of the research has been conducted on ice baths or cold plunges. And just for consistency, we're gonna use the term cold plunge for the rest of our video. Now, when you step into some cold water, like really cold, like 50 degrees Fahrenheit, like this tub behind me here, your body doesn't say, ah, refreshing. It says, ah, I'm under attack. And that's actually what's happening. There's these sensors within our skin called TRP ion channels, which sense the cold water and send a danger message up to our brain. This signal travels up to the brainstem and cues our fight or flight nervous system to cue us to fight and get ourselves out of whatever situation that we're in. Your heart rate and blood pressure will spike. You'll vasoconstrict your limbs, like your hands and your legs, making sure that you preserve blood flow for your vital organs, like your heart, your lungs, and your brain. And eventually, if you stay in the cold for long enough, you'll begin to shiver, which is a form of thermogenesis or heat creation uh, by way of your body contracting your muscles rapidly. Later on, Nicole's gonna talk about the unique metabolic benefits associated with cold and shivering, specifically for women. Deliberately exposing yourself to cold is a form of a hormetic stressor, which are stressors which in high enough amounts could be harmful to your body. Things like cold, heat, exercise, or even sunlight, but in smaller doses, the right dose for you, actually yield very beneficial effects for your body. And we're gonna get into the effects of cold exposure right now. So let's talk about the benefits of cold plunging. And let's split it up into two different categories. Category one are the instant benefits from cold plunging that you'll experience right when you get out of the tub and for the hours after. And then category two are the long-term benefits from cold plunging. One study in the journal Antioxidants back in 2022 found a drop in C-reactive proteins, a marker of inflammation in folks that cold plunge for just 15 minutes a week over the course of six weeks. Now, inflammation is a really big deal for the aging body. In fact, 92% of Americans over the age of 65 today suffer from one or more chronic preventable diseases. Things like heart disease, diabetes, obesity, osteoporosis, and arthritis. And the key link behind all of these diseases is inflammation, at least in part. So if we can do something each and every day or each and every week that can help to lower levels of systemic inflammation, we can infer that it may be helpful to fight against those diseases. Cold plunging can also help to boost immune function. Just 30 to 90 seconds of exposure to cold water led to a 29% reduction in the number of sick days 
in a large scale Dutch study on over 3000 participants. Cold plunging can also improve your mood and mental clarity. And this is one of the benefits that I have found that uh, I feel at least subjectively. And research shows that it increases levels of dopamine by about 250% and norepinephrine by up to 530% after exposure to cold water. Now let's talk about some of the long-term benefits of cold plunging. Now we talked about inflammation in the short term, but there's certainly an anti-inflammatory benefit in the long term from cold plunging as well. Second, it can increase your metabolic rate. Now Nicole's gonna talk about this in depth a little bit later on, but the process of shivering and non-shivering thermogenesis or heat creation is a very metabolically costly process and can be a great benefit to us. And then the third long-term benefit is that of mental resilience, toughness, and grit. We live in a society today that is really set up and engineered for our comfort and convenience. We've got these temperature controlled homes and cars. Netflix will play the next episode without you pressing a button and Uber Eats will come drop the food off at your door. You don't even have to leave the house. And in order to be healthy and to thrive, we actually need challenge and discomfort in our lives. We need those hormetic stressors that we talked about earlier. And so now we actually have to go intentionally seek those things out, whereas our, our long ago ancestors just had them happen naturally. So exposing yourself to cold is one of the best things you can do to build resilience that allows you to do the next hard thing in your life so you can be healthy. Okay, so how cold does the water actually need to be? How long should you stay in the water? And how often should you be doing this each week? Well, let's talk about it in the cold plunge. All right, so let's get in this freezing cold bucket of water here. And I'm gonna set a timer for two minutes. So I don't wanna do a second more. We've got it set to 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna go for two minutes. And the key with a, a cold plunge is that you want it to be cold enough uh, so that you wanna get out of it and not so cold that you feel like your life is in mortal danger, which I don't feel like my life is in mortal danger right now. <laughs> uh, the sweet spot for temperature is, is somewhere in the ballpark of 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit or like 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Um, and there was this, this fantastic meta-analysis done in 2015. They looked at 36 different studies on cold exposure and they found that with like 10 to 15 minutes per week, uh, split into two to five sessions, you can get all of the benefits, the anti-inflammatory benefits of cold exposure therapy or cold plunging. Um, so you really don't need more than that. The study showed that more than that didn't really yield significantly greater benefits. Um, and so my personal cold plunge routine, Nicole and I usually come out here uh, for two minutes or so each after our, our kids go to bed. And I have heard some people say that they have a hard time going to sleep after cold plunging, but uh, we have not had that problem. We go right to bed uh, within like 30 minutes of our cold plunge. Now that could be because we're just sleep deprived from having three young children and running a business, uh, but that's been our experience. And I've noticed in the last couple months since starting to cold plunge, that my HRV has actually gone up pretty significantly. That's heart rate variability. And that's a marker of how ready your nervous system is to handle stress. That's a, that's a pretty cool thing that my uh, my HRV has gone up by that much. Um, it's, it's gone up by about 10 points or so uh, in the last you know, couple months. And I've got seven seconds left. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Um, and Nicole's gonna come jump in here in just a second. She's gonna talk to you guys about her experience with cold plunge and some of the unique benefits for women. My time's up. Woo! So I used to hate the cold. And in fact, I still despise the cold. The first time I ever tried cold plunging, we were at our friend's house and he had one of those just tubs where he just dumped buckets of ice in. And I got in and I was so determined to do it for two minutes and I only made it 50 seconds. I got out, my hands felt like they had pins and needles in them. And it was a horrible experience. And I was like, I never wanna do this again. Fast forward to a couple years later, and our friends at Zensuri sent over this awesome cold plunge. So instead of a cold plunge that just has ice dumped into it and you don't really know the temperature, in this cold plunge, you can actually change the temperature so it's in the range that you want it to be in. This came with a chiller 
And what happens is it pulls water from the cold plunge, it cools it in the chiller, and then it sends it back into the cold plunge so that it's the ideal cool temperature for your cold plunging experience. So let's talk about cold plunging, specifically cold plunging for women over the age of 55. For women in midlife and beyond, cold plunging can still be really beneficial, but you need to be a little bit more strategic in how you go about it. Women respond differently to the cold than men. So when women get into cold water, they have a more intense and severe reaction to the cold waters. They get a lot of vasoconstriction more quickly than men will. As estrogen levels decline post-menopause, women have a harder time with thermoregulation. So it takes them a lot longer to warm up their bodies after they get cold. I would recommend keeping it at about 55 to 58 degrees. While men can go less than that, more like the 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, I would recommend keeping it a little bit warmer and going in for no more than one to three minutes. This will allow your body to activate the benefits without overstressing your nervous system and metabolism. So now we're gonna talk about brown fat and how that gets upregulated when we do cold exposure. So people hear the word fat and they often have a negative connotation with it. So white adipose tissue or white fat is often found around the thighs, around the chest, the arms, and there's both subcutaneous and visceral white fat. Now that can be good to some degree, but if we hold on to too much of that white fat, it can have a really negative impact on our metabolism and our bodies. White fat stores energy and it's very metabolically passive. That's because it doesn't have very much mitochondria. And so because of that, it doesn't generate heat. Brown fat, on the other hand, is really dense in mitochondria. This helps you to burn calories and control your body temperature. And remember, white fat is stored more in your thighs, in your butt, in your chest, sometimes in your abdomen, which is not a great place to carry it. Brown fat is stored more in your shoulders, your neck, your chest, and around your kidneys. When you expose yourself to cold, this tissue kicks in to help you produce heat and it helps protect your internal organs. What's crazy is that your white fat can even change. So over time with cold exposure, your white fat can actually begin to beige and begin to look and act like brown fat. It becomes more metabolically active, which helps you to increase your metabolism and also helps with blood sugar regulation. So if you carry more white adipose tissue and have a slower metabolism, Cold plunging could be a very powerful hormetic stressor. Ready? I'm getting in with her. Really? Not right. yet. Not yet. My two minutes. Now, if you if you don't have a cold plunge, you can still get many of the same benefits with a cold shower. So, uh, something like 90 seconds to two minutes at the end of a warm shower can replicate a lot of the benefits of cold plunging. However most of the research that's been done has been done on cold plunging so i would highly recommend that now you don't have to overcomplicate this just a couple minutes um, try to keep it away from exercise like towards the end of the day um, can go a really long ways towards boosting your metabolism towards decreasing inflammation and helping you to think better so anyways until next time i'm dr matt <laughs> And uh, like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And <laughs> see you guys. Here with me.